communication.
We need a robust pool of resources to draw from to retrospectively study cultural moments on the web. Um, but what I, th I think that there's a corollary to this problem here, a corollary behind this statement. The kinds of political, social, and cultural moments that take place in, on, and through the web are far more complicated than we're accounting for in archiving and in web archival research. These things are complicated, not just technically, but socially as well. Internet researchers are not just flipping old research methods to the web. We are coming up with whole new ways of thinking about how to ask and answer questions. We're coming up with whole new ways of approaching this stuff that we see online. So we're not just taking old archival methods and putting them onto the web. So I think that part of our problem is that we can't be thinking about building web archives as if we're looking at archival researchers or we're looking to serve archival researchers. People who are building web archives are serving very different kinds of researchers. I'm going to come back to that point a couple of times later. We, and what I mean by we, I mean internet researchers, are just starting to explore the kinds of political, social, and cultural moments that take place on the web. For example, the, internet, uh, the Association of Internet Researchers only got its start in the year 2000. And most of our early theoretical literature on social aspects of computers and social networks is really from the 1990s, a lot of which the evidence for which is gone. And so we're only just starting to see how current research trends are influencing web archival mm -hmm. practice. So for today, practice is my focus. What I mean by that is how archivists in official capacities build collections of web artifacts and how researchers do the same for their own research purposes and where their practices overlap, diverge, and sometimes conflict. So I've done field observations, participant observation in internet research and archiving. I've worked to understand internet research methods for exploring web cultural change over time. And I've conducted interviews with a range of people involved in web archiving, all in an effort to understand how practice is developing, how specific professional tensions are at play in this development, and what that means for future internet research. Um, there are a number of theoretical perspectives that I draw from, and these are just a few, um, but really the most prominent, and they're really just for some background, just so you can sort of see where it is that my thinking comes, these things that inform my thinking, and generally how I see the world. And just to sort of make up for a little time, I'll skip through this, because, you know, theoretical perspectives are not always the most fun part of conversations. <laughs> um, so again, these things are, are inform my thinking, and generally how I see the world. Mostly I'm interested in how practices are evolving across and between different communities who are involved, influenced by different disciplinary perspectives and how they're working together or not as web archiving develops. So I'm most interested in collecting evidence or data around evolving practices. I take a grounded theory approach, collecting data through field observations, including my personal participation in web archiving projects as a social scientist since 2001, and attending events like this, I'm studying you right now. <laughs> so keep that in mind as I take field notes. <laughs> uh, and I also do a lot of interviewing. Today I'm presenting on some of the results from some of those interviews. These are in-depth interviews conducted between 2008 and 2010. They were open-ended interviews with some basic themes as guidance and came from snowball sampling. This is a relatively small community, and so this was the best way for us to uh, get a sampling of the types of participa participants we needed to represent. Um, we conducted a small number of interviews, about 17 of them, um, in, in three general and sort of imperfect categories, archivists, technicians, and researchers, many of whom are here today at the assembly, and some of whom had, have had to cross between these roles in order to do the work they wanted to do. So we conducted a small number of interviews because our goal was to have in-depth conversations uh, with these people to eke out the details of practice and web archiving from several different perspectives. And this is an ongoing study. Our goal has not been to generalize about all web archiving efforts, but to notice some commonalities and discover possible points of convergence and contention across different kinds of practitioners. What we found was a list of common themes that broke down into a number in it broke down in a, in a number of ways. They're shared, but they're approached by different communities differently. Respondents often told stories that addressed similar issues, but took really different perspectives on the problems. Seeing these different approaches might help us see new ways of moving web archiving forward in a way that engages researchers and activists more collaboratively. 
So these were the common themes that were emerging from our interviews. There were particularities of the medium, how the nature of the medium has an impact on the development of practices in web archiving. Obstacles facing either building web archiving projects or using web archives for research. Different orientations to users, how we define them, how we understand the relationship between heritage institutions and what their needs are, assumed or, or how to figure that out. And solutions in terms of what they'd like to see happen as web archiving develops. Now I know that solutions is probably the one that everyone wants to talk about, but we're not going to talk about solutions today. That's for later conversation and workshops. Um, I'm only going to address in my talk right now um, obstacles, because I think identifying and really pinning down some of these problems can spark conversations to collaboratively develop better solutions. And really, I'm just going to introduce them. I could give whole talks on each one of these examples that I'm going to, to, to mention today. So let's talk about some obstacles. Interviewees named legal obstacles, obstacles to collaboration, perception problems, both common misperceptions held by the public, and by different research communities, obstacles arising from differences in expertise and technological obstacles. So today I'm only going to talk about, again, narrowing down just so I can fit some time in. Um, today I'm only going to cover the least frequently talked about obstacles. Collaboration. Collaboration and partnership is a complex issue. I asked your viewers about the issues that arise in institutional collaborations, and this broke down into two themes. Practical matters and conceptual matters. In terms of practical matters, those, collaborate, those collaborators who bring technical expertise or who control the technical processes, as this respondent said, tend to absorb the initial and most significant costs. These problems usually get the most attention because they concern the most tangible resources, funding and labor. Collaboration can often look more like researchers contracting out the hard and costly work of building and maintaining an archive that they can then use for their own research. Conceptual matters get less attention because they're less visible and are much more difficult to shake up. Beyond legal questions and practical matters, one interviewee pointed out that the more complicated issues to negotiate which are detailed protocols about what curation consists of and the basis for collection development, these issues are approached very differently by social researchers versus librarians versus archivists due to differences in language, expertise, goals, and other things. So the interview has said it's important to really thrash through those differences and work out a protocol. Technical questions or storage, quality assurance, and capture, capture are also, all issues to be negotiated, but when asked to elaborate on what she meant by thrashing through differences to determine protocol, the interviewee explained that these are necessary and difficult conversations uh, to have about what gets included and excluded from an archive, and what you mean by stabilizing an object. People from different types of disciplines have different concepts in mind when we use those same terms, and it's important to surface those differences early and revisit them as the project develops. For example, the interview was very particular about the definition of what it means to be systematic at the level of rationale or criteria needed for rigorous social science research standards. These concerns aren't always shared among researchers, let alone between researchers, archivists, and technologists. And even when they are, the nuances of these differences can be great. These negotiations are central to collaborations because they drive the development of the collection. They are the foundations of the technical, legal, and curatorial choices made throughout the entirety of a project, and they end up having huge implications for what researchers can ask and answer using the archives collected. Most of our interviews <coughs> speculated on the perceptions of different audiences. They were concerned with public perception, and that includes many members of the research community that we'd like to engage more. And I've written about this before in other places, but a commonly held misperception of the web is that it is an archive itself. We're constantly reminded in public discourse that the web means the end of forgetting, and that the web, which usually stands in for specific systems like Facebook, never deletes anything, so our personal histories can come back and haunt us at any moment. This, particular, this popular misperception of the web clouds our judgment when it comes to understanding web cultural heritage. We shifted our focus to personal histories and away from social histories, and so generally can't see the need for something as seemingly redundant as web archiving. This misperception
perception leaks over into research communities as well. Even internet research communities. You'd be surprised at how many talks I give in which members audibly gasp in shock at comparisons between a 1996 and 2006 impression of whitehouse.gov pulled up from the internet archive. Internet researchers don't know that this stuff exists. A lot of them don't. Many of them do, but just as many of them don't. Saving what they see and study on the web is not a naturally occurring instinct to them. And it's a real shock to them when they realize what they've missed or how their methods might be flawed because of this oversight. And it's important to note here that web archiving is in a position to shift research methods in this area dramatically. We can't tell you guys exactly what it is that we need because we're trying to still figure out what it is that we're looking at. And collaboratively, we can potentially redesign or re redefine what's possible in archiving and what's preferable in research. So I think web archiving has, or, or people working as web archivists have, have a, real, um, um, a real power here to be able to shift some big conversations. Even among researchers who understand the need for and want to actively engage with web archiving, the perception most commonly shared is that the need outweighs the resources. The tools are too complicated and require resources many of us do not have access to, whether those resources are human or machine, or they cost money and time we don't have. They require skills we don't have, and the web-based versions of these tools require us to make methodological trade-offs that we cannot justify, so we walk away. This category, tools, has many ins and outs, and I know many of you are familiar with that. I want to preface my discussion of tool development by saying that ad hoc development of all kinds of tools is necessary. We need people tackling all levels of technical problems in web archiving. But we might want to consider what is gained by contextualizing those efforts in larger goals. So there are three levels of depth to, of abstraction here. Developing tools to keep pace uh, with web development, that is no small feat. Um, building tools, but second, building tools to do what researchers need them to do is also no small feat, especially when we realize that researchers are still trying to figure out what they need their analysis tools to do in relation to the web. But third, and possibly more interesting, to engage researchers, we need to build tools that actually capture what researchers need to capture in order to answer questions. Surprisingly, this might um, be the easiest one to tackle. And I know I'm coming right up on time here, so I'm going to try to work through the end of this week. Um, often the researcher doesn't know what metadata elements are missing or what indexing elements are missing from a certain archiving tool until it's too late. Social science researchers working on their own or with desktop or web-based tools find themselves with archives that are full of redundancies that need to be cleaned out, missing data that actually shows or, or just missing big chunks of data that actually show significant change, or a mess of archive sites with no logic of how the individual objects can be related to each other. Personal desktop archiving tools are designed from a basic needs perspective. The designer's assumption is that the user wants to save websites to view later, which is a great start, but is not really valuable for a social scientist or internet researcher. The next level of design abstraction or complication is that the user may want to know the exact click stream. And I, I've, I've been told that this is an odd thing, that, that how do we even know that this is what people want? Well, from a social science perspective, this is kind of an obvious next step given our theoretical history that draws on hyperlink analysis and network analysis. Connections are important to social science researchers. And so enabling ways to see those connections between objects is incredibly important. So that idea of, well, the next level of abstraction being being able to archive clickstream analysis is, is kind of, to, to us, um, a pretty big deal. This reminds me of one interview of, of one interviewee's description of problems of interinstitutional collaborations in web archiving. She explained that people from different disciplines have different concepts in mind when we use the same terms. These differences in design of personal desktop archiving tools, um, or these, surf these differences can surface in the design of personal desktop archiving tools. It's important to surface those differences early. And it's important for researchers to be very clear about their research goals and thorough about what metrics they'll need to reach their goals. But this kind of knowledge may need to develop through collaborative negotiation. We 
need to make, we may need to be working much more closely together to understand what those needs really are and what those metrics can possibly be. And so I just want to speculate just a little bit to wrap up. Perhaps the model of the auteur researcher digging away through the dusty archives alone in the library is an outdated and insufficient model when it comes to internet research. That archival research is not the model we should be using to understand what researchers want to do with web archives. Perhaps it's also important to develop some tools that are not multi-purpose. Perhaps not all tools need to be accessible to all users, and special research tools can be designed to meet higher level basic needs of different researchers. But these needs are evolving as we come to understand more about web culture and don't necessarily stem from flipping old methods into new media. And maybe both of these points would be best served by many, many more small-scale web history projects that pair researchers and archivists who don't just complement each other's practices, but collaboratively, collaboratively work to develop new ones to map out the evolving understanding of the web. As if we might want to build these, these, these projects as examples to show what, what we actually want to do with archives. Um, that doesn't actually or necessarily mesh with archival research practices. Maybe the methods of maybe the methods of the historian aren't as really relevant for understanding what web archiving is or can do. Maybe the activities of the anthropologist or the activities of the archaeologist are a better fit. I'm actually working on a book project to sort of work on that analogy to see if there are better ways to understand methods in, in web history. Maybe we can start using this as an opportunity to think of web archiving as, as one of my colleagues at the Virtual Knowledge Studio in Amsterdam called it, as web archiving as a collaboratory, where we work together to build understanding of what the researchers' needs are and what kinds of resources can meet those needs. That, that it's not a researcher is a user and you guys provide a service to us, but that maybe we need to much more collaboratively work together to build those definitions together instead of just complementary. My goals for highlighting some of these findings for this particular audience are to untangle some of the complexity of the obstacles we face so we can tackle them more strategically. To point out moments at which we're working together and in parallel and sometimes even at odds. And to inspire conversation and cross-community collaboration. Despite the fact that I've spoken at length about some of our big problems, um, I think that, we, that they can all be seen as moments for possible connections between the different approaches to web archiving. Thank you.